video, we're going to basically demonstrate why the condition, the sufficient condition that we established in the previous uh, condition is uh, good enough. And it tells us, it gives us the information that we need for us to conclude on whether we have a maximum or a minimum when we are working with problems that have got more than one choice variable. Right, so we are starting off with a quick recap of the, the sufficient condition for a maximum or minimum that we established, right? So basically the condition is saying that if uh, you are to conclude for a maximum, you need the direct partials to be less than zero, as well as the product of the direct partials to be greater than the product of the cross partials, right? And in that instance, you are safely uh, saying that um, the direct, sorry, the second derivative of the total differential is less than zero. Right. Same applies with the minimum case. Right. We can tell that the second derivative of the um, total differential is greater than zero if the direct partials are greater than zero and the product of the direct partials is greater than the product of the cross partials. Right. So what we will demonstrate in uh, the next slides is basically to show how we can actually make this conclusion with certainty. Where is the proof, right? It's what we're going to bring out, as well as also show how we can use matrices to come up with the same conclusion. All right, so going back to the second derivative of the total differential, right? What we are going to do is to basically uh, represent this um, equation in a quadratic formula that allows us to isolate the elements of this equation and show how they are behaving and uh, also show how the, 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 the change in their behavior affects the value of your, your total differential. All right, so we are renaming all the elements in the equation using uh, these letters. So if now we let your dx be equal to u, your dy be equal to v, your fxx be equal to a, b, and your fyy be equal to b, your fxy, fyx, which are your cross partials, be equal to h, and then uh, your d squared z be equal to q. We can rewrite this equation in such a way where we'll be able to um, tell whether q is, is greater than zero or q is less than zero, right? And the importance of us knowing whether q is greater than zero or q is less than zero is that we, we are able to actually conclude for a minimum or a maximum with certainty, right? So substituting back, right, the second um, uh, total differential basically becomes Q is equals to A U squared plus 2HVU plus B V squared. So you see that for FXX, right, we have substituted with an A. For your DX, we have substituted with a U. So now it becomes A U squared, this term. And this term, FYX, excuse me, FYX is H, right? And then your DY is V, your DX is U. Same applies with this fourth, third element, it will be H U V. So H U V plus H U V will give us true H U V, right? And then the last element, F Y Y, it will be your B. Then D Y is V squared, so it's B V squared, right? So we've formulated a new quadratic equation, right? And then in the new quadratic equation, we see that your U and V, right, which are your change in x and your change in y are behaving like variables and then your a b and h are behaving like uh, coefficients right so what we have is three elements on of the three elements only two are squared right so it is important that we complete the square for us to be able to uh, proceed with the analysis so to allow for the completion of the square what you're going to do is we add and subtract a new variable and we know that it's mathematically correct um, adding and subtracting simply means that we have not done anything to the equation, right? So we are adding and subtracting h squared v squared over a, right? So we are adding it to the first two elements and then subtracting it uh, on the last element, right? So 
doing that allows us to factor out A and also factor out V, right? And create an equation that basically has U and V squared in both uh, elements of the equation, right? So if you look at this equation, basically you see that U is squared, V is squared, and also in this uh, part of the equation, V is squared, right? Um, all right, so having A, V squared and U squared simply means that U and V are always going to be positive, right? And then if we know that U and V are always going to be positive, then it means what is going to drive the sign of Q now became, will basically be the coefficient variables A, B, and H, right? So depending on the behavior of A, B, and H, we can now conclude or see how Q will either be negative or positive. So for instance, if A is positive and B is positive, and H is also positive. H, in this instance, is going to be squared, so it will always be, be positive. So if A is positive and B is positive, we will know with certainty that this value of Q is also going to be positive. So in that instance, where A is positive, B is positive, and A times B is greater than H squared, then your Q is going to be positive, and we can conclude for a minimum. If your A is negative and B is negative, right? It means your A times B is going to be positive. And if it's greater than H squared, then we can conclude that uh, Q is definitely going to be negative and it's a maximum, right? If we are to bring back the original names of our A, B, and H, remember these coefficients, we said they represent the direct partials as well as the cross partials, right? So your A is the direct partial with respect to X, and B is your direct partial with respect to Y, and then your H are the cross partials, which is basically the same as what we had in our sufficient condition, the original function, right? So basically we have shown that the only things that are going to influence your Q are going to be the direct and the cross partials. The change in X and the change in Y themselves, they do not uh, influence the sign because they are always going to be positive. All right. And then to demonstrate this using matrices, right, we are rewriting our quadratic equation in a way that allows us to basically put it in a matrix notation, right? So if we are to put this equation in a matrix notation, you see that Q is being multiplied by a row vector of UV, a two by two matrix of the coefficients A, B, and H, as well as a column vector of UV, right? And then if you had to multiply through, it will definitely take us back to, to our original Q function, right? So with that uh, new equation, matrix notation basically the condition becomes that um, we, we look at the element a as well as the determinant of the two by two matrix of coefficients right so your matrix your element a if it's less than zero and the determinant of your coefficients is greater than zero then we say we have got a negative definite then we conclude for a maximum. So we are saying with certainty that your Q is less than zero and we have a maximum. And on the other hand, if your A is greater than zero and the determinant of your two by two is also greater than zero, we call this a positive definite. And there uh, we conclude that Q is greater than zero and we have a minimum, right? If you are to rewrite this using our original notations of your second uh, total differential, your A basically represents your direct partial with respect to X. And then we are saying if that is less than zero and the determinant of uh, your two by two matrix is basically a determinant of a matrix that is made up of um, second derivatives, right? Both the direct derivatives as well as the cross uh, partials, right? Okay, so from this, what we are saying is that um, we, are able to come up with uh, 
a matrix um, of the second derivatives. Basically, if you are working with a system of equation um, that allows you to come up with this, you'll be able to work uh, or decide on uh, the extremum, the behavior of the extremum, basically using this um, two equations, right? Two, 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 two conditions, basically, right? So from the, the system of equation, you come up with the matrix, and then if you uh, can calculate the determinant of uh, that matrix, then you can also make the conclusion on whether you've got a maximum or minimum, right? So this matrix that has got second derivatives, we call it a Hessian, right? And then uh, uh, we are saying that Hessian is the one that is helping us conclude on whether we have got a maximum or a minimum.